Hello, everybody, and welcome to Thinking with Time Machine. This is an indie mod from a developer called Strideman and a publisher, Signhead Studios. Two people that I've never heard of, but hey, that's always great to get new stuff. You can pick this up on Steam right now for the low, low price of absolutely nothing. Yes, this is a 100% free game as long as you have Portal 2. It is required to play the game. If you don't have Portal 2, what are you doing watching this video? Go go play Portal 2, seriously. But this is, a, this is what's called a standalone mod, which is a really weird kind of thing because you still need Portal 2, so it's not 100% standalone, but you can play it straight out of Steam. You don't have to open Portal 2 to play it. So it is a little bit of a misnomer there, but that's what it's called. It's a standalone mod. Now we can skip most of these options because, I mean, it's a Portal 2 mod, so all of these options are the same options that are in Portal 2. We have basic audio settings, video, advanced video with all kinds of fun stuff. You know, standard, the keyboard and stuff like that. There is... However, a slight bit of difference, which I'm looking for it right now, ah, where we actually have extra functions. Ah, here we are. We have a start time, stop, and re return time back. That's a little hard to roll off the tongue. Return time back. This, those words put together are a little weird. It's, I'm putting my time back on my shelf. But yeah, I mean, that's really the only difference with the options, because again, this is a Portal 2 mod, so let's rock on. Let's just jump straight into Thinking with Time Machine. Now, this is another one of those games where there really is no saves. Uh, you kind of just have continue and new. You don't have multiple saves. Not a terrible thing in this game, but I mean, it's... Like Portal. Portal had the same exact thing, so not really a problem. But we will start with a new game because it will take us through this tutorial and I can introduce you to all the little components and all the little interesting things. Start you out at the very, very end of Portal 2. Like, this is the ending sequence to Portal 2. Spoiler alert, I know that's a little late, but hey, guess what? Like I said, I told you, if you hadn't played Portal 2 yet, you should have stopped the video and played Portal 2. So this is actually the ending sequence to Portal 2. And this is the continuation. This is the new part, as you can tell by the rendering of the hand. And the whole bird hitting the glass. I'm sorry, I really do like this intro. This is a really good intro. It's a really creative intro. I personally believe Portal 2 should end there. Shell got out. That should be the end of Portal 2. If they make a Portal 3, it should be a completely different character. It should not be Shell. But uh, that's not my decision, and I'm sure if anybody can make it work, it is Valve. Now, as we can see, supposedly the end of Portal 2 was a hologram room that a bird somehow got into and destroyed. Now, we know birds can get into it due to the fifth section, the DLC of the multiplayer, which, by the way, is also free if you have Portal 2. So, again, if you don't have Portal 2, why the hell are you watching this video? Uh, now, if you remember this, this is the balls, you know, the, the, the balls that were in the underground, huh, that, yeah, I guess that's a relative term, the under-underground of the Aperture Labs. These are the old-school Aperture Labs. I mean, these are the same elevators and everything. And you go up to get back into Aperture Labs, but the elevator at the end of the game went up to get, quote, unquote, outside. So I think there might be a little continuity error here, but, you know, whatever. Now, this mod has basically an entirely recreated look. I mean, this elevator itself looks different. The rooms look different. Everything looks different. So somebody put some serious, serious effort into this. And I am quite, quite impressed with this. And as we can see right there, we have the portal gun. But there's a new little attachment. It's like a, 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 
iPad if it's not infringing on Apple's patents. Now, the first thing that you'll notice is that the portal gun, you know, we have both portals already, and it's a little banged up, a little bit more detail. We can also do this. Holy crap, I have a body and a tablet. Now, the tablet is the time machine, and this over here actually describes how to use it, and we'll wait until it loops again. Aperture Labrador. Lab I tried to say laboratories and laboratories at the same exact time. All right, but you hold R to start recording. You hold Q to stop recording. You move the hell out of the way. You hit F to play back. So let me show you. We hit R to start recording, and I like how the tablet actually does things. We hit Q to stop recording. And then we hit F to play back, and we can see we have another person, another me, you know, walking onto the button, and the button interacts and opens the door, and that's how you solve the puzzle. What I also really like about it, if I stand right here, if we look at the tablet when I hit F, we can see, you know, uh, we can also see that it doesn't see me, so this is... More like time travel, because I wasn't here when I recorded that. Uh, uh, it, it's... Okay, so in Portal and Portal 2, you have the three standard dimensions, X, Y, Z, you know, forward, backwards, left, right, up, and down. And then we have the fifth dimension, which is what the portals use to get from one place to another. Time is the fourth dimension, and that's what this adds. So in this game, you're actually playing with five dimensions simultaneously. And it's kind of fun. Uh, so let's just hit F to play back. Though I see this more as either... Uh, like you're playing with a hologram, like the Hollow Duke from Duke Nukem 3D. Or it's multiplayer for people like me who really don't like playing multiplayer. I'm playing with myself. Alright, so this room is a little bit different. Now you have to interact with the hologram itself. As the little video is showing you here. Which now I have to wait because I hesitated. And what it is, is obviously you start recording. You walk over, you crouch. You go back, you play it. The hologram crouches, you jump on the hologram. So the hologram is made out of, I don't know, it's like a hard light hologram or something like that. But one thing I did find out, if you're holding crouch, let's see if they fix that. If you're holding crouch and you hit R to record, I think I broke it. <laughs> All right. Um, that should be enough time. There we go. We hit Q. And then we hit F. You don't start out crouch, so you have to not be crouched when you start recording. Then you can crouch, which I did right there, and then you can interact with the person. Oh, now I'm being seen in the camera. That was weird. I wasn't seen before. All right, so record, crouch, one, two, three, up, one, two, three, quit, F, yeah, no, I'm not seeing... Oh, I'm only seeing if I'm close? Well, that's interesting. I didn't have a head either. Did you notice that? I noticed that. Hmm. That was weird. But, I mean, that's how you solve the puzzles. You start solving the puzzles by using time. So the first thing you do is you figure out what the puzzle is. Well, let's see. We have an emancipation field here. We have a button here. If we hit the button, those lasers show up. We get a box made. We have to put the box here. We step on the button. And then we can see that that activates, which activates a door over there. However, once the timer's up, the emancipation field ends, kills the box, and, you know, we have to start all over again. Well, that's where the time machine comes in. We hit record, and we loop again. Button. Wait till the box is made, which I really like it, this part. This is really cool. Box in the hole. Stand on the button. 
box is having collision glitches. And quit recording. And then we hit play back, F, and we just watch the fun. Now we can see that there are countdown timers on when our duplicate is doing things. Like we can see green, orange, red, you know, that kind of stuff. And that is really, really, really useful later on in the game. All right, so this is the first tutorial level. We're still in this tutorial, by the way. The whole way down there, that's the tutorial. And I think this is the last level of the tutorial. I'm not 100% sure. But, uh, so this is the first part where we're actually integrating the portal gun and the time machine. So record, fire, fire. I've already beaten this about a billion times, so there's a reason I'm doing this. And then, wait, that was the blue one, so fire. Wait a couple of minutes, or seconds. I don't know, that should be long enough. Stop recording. Playback. All right, so we got a portal up there, we got a portal up there. So we can act or interact with our temporal portals, I guess is a good term for it our past portals to beat the level. But our portals don't go away when they're in the emancipation field either, which is an interesting thing because the person that put up the portals didn't go through the field. So I don't think that ever actually comes up in the rest of the game. I've beaten this game twice. This game is actually fairly simple. Uh, I find the puzzles overly simplistic. Uh, and there there are a few mistakes in the building of the uh, puzzles. Like this one, what you have to do, uh, you record yourself picking up the box, putting it on a button, going over here, standing on this button, that goes up, but you have to be up there to do it. You know, there's a couple of steps, but I mean, you don't really gotta bother with that because you can just do this, record, Crouch, two, three, up, two, three, quit, grab the box, hit F, crouch, up, jump. Okay, so we're up here now. Stay. And then this is where the elevator is supposed to be to get up there, but we can also do this. Record, crouch, two, three, up, two, three, done. Grab the box, play back. Jump. Up. And look, I've already made it across. <laughs> I mean, I'm already done. I skipped that entire puzzle. Now, the reason I brought the box is because the box is needed whee, for that right there to activate that uh, walkway. So you can actually get to the exit. That's the only reason the box is needed, and obviously, I totally bypassed half that puzzle. Fairly simple puzzles, and there are a few map-making glitches in there. I mean, it's not a real big problem. Um, now, this one's interesting. Like, if you listen carefully... We hear music, music that I've never heard before. I hope it's not copyrighted by anybody. Um, but we have, you know, a button over there activates that thing. I forget what all these things are called. Then we have another one up there, and then we can bounce, and we have a box placement thing here, and then we can bounce back. The box placement thing opens the door. Whee! All right, so obviously we start by pushing the button. And we get that. And then we hear this. It's like, what the crap? Yeah. Um, that confused the hell out of me the first time I saw that. Uh, but the Borealis. Now, the Borealis is the... As far as I can tell, the one thing that actually connects the portal games and the Half-Life games, because in Portal 2, you can actually find the Dock of the Borealis. And in Half-Life 2, I believe it's Episode 2, they talk about the Borealis just 
disappearing from its dock. Well, here's the Borealis. Apparently, this is where it came from. And since we're fiddling around with... I don't have my tablet on me right now, but apparently since we're fiddling around with time machines... Um, well, apparently this is where it went. Uh, but I would also point out that the Borealis disappeared from its dock. It wasn't in motion, so how did it bust through the wall? I don't know. I'm just going with it. Uh, so I actually spent a good 10 minutes just bouncing back and forth trying to figure out what to do from here because I thought that was just part of the puzzle. So I figured maybe I have to find a portaling, plat or portaling wall on there somewhere, but I couldn't find one here, so I didn't know where to start from. Well, then I figured maybe I hit the crane there, because, I mean, it's sticking up, and we passed right by it with the, the launchers. Um, tried it two or three times, and then I actually went through the crane, so that's a no. So I was really, really confused. Of course, the entire game draws your eyes in that direction right now. It doesn't draw your eye in that direction very well. So, I mean, you don't really see that you can actually go this way. And then we see GLaDOS, and listen. <laughs> now, you recognize those um, voices, I guess you can call them? Those are Peabody and Atlas from the multiplayer of Portal 2. So, I, I don't know what they're actually talking about. I really have no clue what they're talking about. They're talking about security cameras? I know nothing about security cameras in this game. I've seen zero security cameras in this game. And as we can see, GLaDOS is, like, dead. But, uh, I don't know. They're talking about GLaDOS is still active, but GLaDOS is dead. I'm not understanding the story in this game. I don't... It wasn't very well built. Um, it wasn't very well made. So the only thing you can do from here is actually go in here, which is the GLaDOS emergency shutdown, keep unlocked. Which, if you're actually trying to do this while they're talking, the door's locked, you can't open it, which is a little... ironic? I don't know, funny? Yes. But we can open it now. And then we have this very bland room. And we can go over here, and we see the keyboard is flashing for us. And we see this. And I originally thought it was a live feed, but that's not happening. But that's Atlas and Peabody attacking GLaDOS. Which I'm assuming is at the very end of Portal 2. Um, now, I don't, I don't know if anybody else has seen this, but I've seen this. But every now and then, when you beat Portal 2... Peabody and Atlas aren't there. I don't know if anybody else has seen it. I don't know if I'm just insane. But I have played it multiple times. I've beaten that game many, many times. And half the time I see them, half the time I don't. Alright, so we saw that. So I figured something else happened out here. Well, no. Apparently that was pre-recorded. And then we have to go over here to pick up this thing, which I totally didn't notice for a good 20 minutes. GLaDOS, SOS, find time machine, back Jan 20, 2021, 2359, 57. That is a very specific time. Um, I guess GLaDOS is injured and can't use proper English. I don't know. Um, and we don't have our time machine right now, but I do have legs. That's a rare thing when it comes to first-person shooters. Um... And then I was confused again. I'm like, wait, am I supposed to do something else? Because that didn't really do anything. Did I unlock the door? And I went back, found out it didn't. So I came back here, and I saw that. These aren't really easy to see. Um, and we can click on it, and we see the doors open. So I'm like, okay, finally, the door opened. Now we can actually go somewhere. And I explored this entire area. There are no secrets, at least that I could find. But yeah. Um, so that confused me. Uh, one thing about Portal that made Portal so good is that Valve spent a lot, a lot of time to make sure the player was looking in the right direction at the right time. Whee! That's why Portal 2 was so easy to pick up and understand, but it was still kind of difficult to master because obviously it was the portals. 
but yeah, Valve was really good at making sure the player was pointing in the right direction at the right time when either plot, which didn't come up all that often, or tutorials were in, in view. This game, not so much. So I mean, once you get it, I mean, it's there and you understand it, but I kind of don't understand the plot itself. I don't know. So now we're on level two again. And let's see if I can remember this one. Okie dokie. So I got to go that way. And what I need to do... Look, I got my time machine back. My ma time machine magically showed up again. I don't know why it went away initially, but it it's back. So, eh, whatever. Record. Crouch. Two. Three. Up. Two. Three. Quit. Play. Down. Whoop. Up. Yay. Uh, through the grid. Push the button. And then we get two of the boxes, which are the, uh, um, what are they called? I forget what they're called. Something redirection. Oh, I totally forget what these things are called. How long has it been since I played Portal, man? Crouch, two, three, up, two, three, quit, playback. You do that a lot. Uh, timing later on in the game is everything. Um, so, like, not taking into account the time where I sat around trying to figure out where to go because my eye wasn't drawn in the right direction at the right time, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, by the way. That That's my fault. That's not necessarily the game developer's fault. That's my fault. So I'm not taking that as a problem. Um, crouch, two, three, up, two, three, quit, play. Um, yeah, so not taking that into account. Ugh. I glitched. Let's try that again. Uh, not taking that into account, it took me about 45 minutes to beat the game. The second time round, it took me about 40 minutes to play the game, to beat the game. Now, why so little a difference when the first time I played Portal 2 took me about 7 hours, the second time took me about 2 hours? It's because these puzzles are not hard. They really, really aren't. They're kind of basic, kind of easy to understand. And... Yeah, the only problem is you have to get the timing down to the millisecond, and this is a perfect example of that. So what we have to do, and I'll just say it straight up, is that shaft goes the whole way down, but we have these lasers here so we can't jump down. This one is just an elevator that goes down. But if we go down, I believe, yeah, there's an emancipation field right there, so we can't take the blocks down there. So we have to drop it down here. However, there's another emancipation field there. Emancipation. Am I using the right word there? I've been using that in the entire show. I'm not 100% sure if I'm using the right word. All right, so what we actually have to do, we have to record ourselves picking up and dropping down there all three boxes... Um, and then go down there, play it back, and catch all three boxes. And if your timing is even a millisecond off, you know, it's, it's just, it doesn't work. You lose one of the boxes and it doesn't work. So, uh, boop. Now we do another one. Bloop. And then we do another one. Bloop. And then we quit. Now, I don't know if you were paying attention to where the boxes were, but as you can see, they just kind of drop in a weird fashion. So they drop pretty much wherever they want to drop. So like the this one was over here. So I'm not 100% sure that my duplicate will pick up this box. So I don't know if this is going to work 100%. But this is where the video in the tablet comes into play because you really, really, really have to pay attention. 
Okay, so we got that one. It's gonna drop it. Okay, got one. Got the other one. Okay, so she picked up the second one. Dropped. Caught. Alright. Picked up the third one. Good, good, good. Drop. Caught. Awesome. Okay, I got th all three of them. This is the first time I ever caught all three of them in one try. Usually it takes me two or three tries to do it because one, she either picks up, she doesn't pick up the box, my duplicate. Uh, two, I miss. Because I mean, like, I'd say you probably about have a half a second to catch that box. And it takes about a half a second to get from here to here to catch the box. <laughs> so, I mean, your timing has to be pinpoint and it just gets worse from here. Uh, the learning curve, well, the difficulty curve, not the learning curve. The learning curve is nothing. The difficulty curve in this game is a cliff. And it's kind of annoying, actually. All right, let's see if I can remember this one. Oh, this one's just annoying. It's not hard, it's just really annoying. Now this one, I don't know how you're supposed to do it. Um, where's the button? The button's on the other side, I think. So I have to go to the other side to get the box, um, I think. Wait, no. Crap! I don't remember where the button is. Oh, I remember where the button is. The button's up there. The button's in the center. It's been a little while since I played it, so I don't remember everything about these puzzles. But the button is up there. And obviously we can't reach it just by jumping, so we have to record. Crouch. Two. Three. Up. And I'll leave a little bit more time while I'm up, just to give a little bit more leeway and then we play back. And as we can see, these grids, these fields, don't affect our uh, past person, our hologram here. So it's not a, they're not a problem for that. Which is really useful in this particular level because you have to do it the hard way. Okay, so this is how I do it. I don't know whoa, if this is how you're supposed to do it, but this is how I do it. What I do is I pick a spot, like right there, that's where I'm going to put the box. I hit record. I hit E. Pick up the imaginary box. Walk this way. Hold it out through the field here. Give it a couple of seconds. And then hit Q. So now I'm not recording again. And then I pick up the box. Move it up a couple of lines. So that's where I did it. And then I go around... And once I'm through, I hit F. So she picks it up. She walks back here, through the field, and then I can just grab the box on the other side. And then I repeat the pot process. So I'm gonna do it there. So record, E, up, around, through the field. I have to get pretty close to the field. Hold a couple of seconds, quit, not recording, not recording. Move the box to where I aimed. And do it again. Yeah, this is pretty much how I play this level. I can't see any other way to play the level. Because if you just let the box drop. And just trust that you'll get another box. Well, obviously that's not going to work. Because you have to push the button again to get another box. So yeah, I think this is the only way you can actually do this. Alright. Uh, no, actually, I don't have to do that again because I can just put the box right there. And then this gives me one of those redirection cubes that I can't really remember the name of. And then I have to do the same thing again, just backwards. So we'll do it right there. So one, two, three, four. So record, E, up, through the field. Not recording, not recording. Back, one, two, three, four. 
yeah, precision is the name of the game in this one. You have to be very precise. Far, far more precise than you had to be in Portal 2 or Portal 1. Whee. Not necessarily a problem, but it is mildly annoying, especially when you're trying to do one particular part for the, I don't know, 80th, 90th time, and it's just, you can't just get the timing right because it's, you know, you have half a second to do what you need to do, and it takes a second to do what you need to do. And that comes up even more importantly later on in the game. But you know what? As this series is whoa, called Chrono Recommends, whoa, I'll give you a guess as to what I think about this game. I think it is worth playing. Uh, it's free, so that definitely makes it, you know, not a risk at least. You know, I, I don't think they can charge for these kind of things because it's a Portal 2 mod. But if they did charge for it, like five bucks or something like that, I'd still recommend it. But not much more than that. Um, oh, this one, this you can actually get yourself stuck in permanently. And uh, yeah, if you do this, no, not F, R, forward, Q. F. So you go in here. And then what I tried to do, I tried to actually get across here. With a block, by the way. So I tried to get across here, so what I did is I hit R. Stood on the button. Waited a couple of seconds. Hit Q. Then I grabbed the box I was getting. Hit F. went through the field, put the box down, and went... Okay, how do I get out of here? And then I went back, and this door was shut. I'm like, okay, well, I'll just use the, the, the recording I did to push the button. Whoops. I am now permanently stuck in this room. I cannot get out of this room. There is no way out of this room. Um... Yeah, and there's no accounting for it at all. What you have to do, you have to get out of here and load your last save and hope that it saved at the very beginning of the level. And it did. Yeah, so there are a few map-making glitches in there. Nothing terrible and nothing you can't work around. Um, for the life of me, I can't remember. Oh. That's how you actually get the box up there. I keep, I'm trying to hit F to point, because with uh, in Portal 2 multiplayer, you hit F, and it actually points. <laughs> All right. Anyways, I'm going to wrap up this episode here. Uh, the levels get, well, not much harder. I wouldn't qualify them as much harder. They're just far more annoying, because the timing required is pinpoint. Um, and it's gonna take, it will take several tries, even if you know exactly what you need to do. Like, if you played the, that particular level, like, 20 times, you know exactly what you need to do, but it's still based on pinpoint precision, and it will still take you the same amount of time to do it. <sighs> so, yes, I would recommend this game. Because it's free and because it's, well, because it's free, because it's Portal, uh, anything Portal I'll play with for, at least give it a try, uh, and because it actually introduced some really interesting mechanics and has a hell of a lot of potential. I really hope somebody expands on this game as it's incredibly short, the plot is severely lacking, and I'll leave the plot to for other people to figure out. Um, I have a general idea of what's going on, because, well, I've beaten this several times, and I kind of know how it ends. But it is a little hard to grasp, um, and it's Spartan. It's very, very basic. 
And that's not necessarily a problem. This game is about the mechanics. It's about playing with the time machine. So, yeah. Um, I would recommend this, but I wouldn't expect too much from the game if I were you. So, I will say see you guys in the next episode. And as always, keep playing the game and have fun.